Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on the time you watch this video. And zdravo, ei, hola, or hello, depending on the country you watch this video in. With this video, we want to inform you about the interesting and inspiring workshops presented to you at Euro Maintenance 2020, 2021, the largest European Congress on Maintenance to be held in Rotterdam, in the Netherlands. These workshops relate to the central themes of the Congress, human factor, smart industry, safety, asset performance management, and today's topic, sustainability. To give you an insight on what to expect on this topic, we invited three experts to share their knowledge with you. Ladies first, so I want to present to you Hilda Veenstra. She is co-founder of a company called Local Matters, and the mission is to help companies in their process to become sustainable and future-proof. And she is writer of the book Duurzaam zijn moet je durven, which is Dutch, of course, and can be translated to Dare to be Sustainable. So welcome, Hilda. Thank you. Uh, also on this round table, we have uh, Wim, Wim van Kouwenbergen. And Wim is director of BEMAS, which is the Belgian Maintenance Association. And he has a great passion for maintenance, reliability and asset management. And that is why some people call him the maintenance evangelist. Yeah. Great. Correct. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Yes. Welcome, Wim. And on this round table as well, we have uh, Ron Wever and he is cluster manager baggage. I need to say baggage at Amsterdam Airport Schiphol, and he is lecturer at Hogeschool Utrecht, University of Applied Sciences, and he is chairman for the section SUTO in NVDO. And this means that the section is connecting the, the knowledge and uh, the, the, the research universities are executing to improve the maintenance. Welcome, Ron. Thank you. And a nice introduction. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, well, with this introduction, uh, we start a conversation, and it is always a nice way to start a conversation with a statement. And I think I found a, a bold statement to be made. Um, the statement is sustainability and maintenance should be closely linked. So the maintenance and asset management department should be highly involved in achieving the company's sustainability goals. What do you think? And I would like to start with Wim. Well, uh, thank you very much for this opening statement. Um, it's a, a very daring opening statement, and I would even uh, raise a little bit the bar here, because I think uh, the should in your question uh, should not be there. Uh, it's, uh, in my opinion, sustainability and maintenance are closely linked together. It's a fact, and it's not uh, a conditional uh, or a potential statement. Huh? So, um, you know, the, the real question here is, what do you understand under sustainability. Um, if I look at Wikipedia here, uh, sustainability is the ability to exist constantly. Okay, so my statement here is, um, if you want something that exists constantly, you cannot have it without doing maintenance and without proper asset management. Uh, it's, it's something that is in the nature, you know, the first, the first humans. Um, that were the people that made the tools. And we have a, 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 the difference between the first Homo sapiens and the Homo habilis, which was the, 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 the species before. Well, do you know what, is the, what was the difference? No, tell me, <laughs> tell well, us. They both, they both made tools, but the ah. Homo sapiens was the first to make a tool and not to throw it away, but to keep it. So the first human, the fact for being human, that is keeping things to exist. And so when he had this stone tool, you know, uh, you throw it away because it was a little chip of it. He repaired it and he, he, he continued to use it. So he already maintained his first tool. So being human is maintaining. So that's why uh, it's that fundamental that sustainability and maintenance are uh -huh. closely linked together. So maintenance is about one billion years old. <laughs> yeah, uh, as soon as we were uh, a humankind, a human species, 
Yes, we uh it's older I hear. Hilda, <laughs> yeah. Hilda. Okay, Come let's in. do better. <laughs> because well, I agree with the statement and I agree with raising the bar by Wim. Uh because indeed they should be closely linked, sustainability and asset management, and they are closely linked, except not everybody practices that. But um I think asset is a means to reach sustainability and sustainability is an end, is the goal. And the reason I'm saying that it's even older is because I think uh, sustainability is asset management. Because what is sustainability about? It's about maintaining our planet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, the planet is about 3.8 million uh, billion years old. <laughs> And as long as there have been people, it's about maintaining this planet. So we've done a poor job so far. <laughs> That's why uh, sustainable asset management is now a very urgent topic, which is why it's very important that Euro Maintenance Next um, addresses the issue. Uh, but yeah, I think it's, um, it's very necessary to uh, make sure that we use asset management to become sustainable. Also, because of the statement, um, resources are becoming scarce, also within companies. So if you let uh, sustainability and asset management work together to achieve company goals, it's a more efficient use of uh, resources. Okay. Um uh, uh, Ron, we are talking about a, a very important goal. Uh, in 2019, your team won an award uh, for Asset Management Team of the Year. So uh, you are well of the fact uh, that uh, only in cooperation you can reach your goals. Uh, how important is cooperation to reach maybe the most important goal ever, uh, save the planet? Yes, that's a good point. And uh, I have to uh, um, admit that I think a, a large amount of uh, becoming sustainable lies in the maturity level of a company. Uh, because we do uh, understand sustainability uh, quite different uh, throughout the world. Uh, what we find uh, sustainable is not uh, driving uh, or uh, getting rid of your uh, wreckage. Uh, somewhere uh, in the in, on the top of an island where you have your ship and that you uh, you you drop it there. Sustainable is thinking upfront um, about your asset, uh, how you acquire it, maintain it, but also uh, get rid of in a good way that the uh, planet Earth will not suffer from it. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, um, almost a cradle to cradle thought about how you uh, put maintenance in the life cycle of an asset, but sustainability is also part of the life cycle of an asset, because without that life cycle, uh, we cannot uh, sustain as a human race. Yes, um, I agree, and I think you have uh, made a perfect bridge to, uh, to, the perfect, uh, to the first pitch video I want to show you. This is Antoine Despujol. This workshop will show you why maintainability is a pillar of sustainability, which is a key success factor for the future. A maintainable item is a benefit for environment, for cost, and also a social benefit, because maintenance is generally a local work. We will also discuss multiple factors involved in maintainability, such as accessibility, disassembly, testability, modularity and so on, and how it can be measured. We will also discuss the questions that need to be answered to specify maintainable assets during design or to evaluate them before acquisition. This workshop will provide you with a clear approach to ensure a high maintainability level to your assets. Looking forward to seeing you to discuss it. So this workshop aims to give participants a method of uh, evaluating assets before acquisition or to specify them during the design phase. So this is all about design for maintenance. Uh, uh, Ron, where do you see a link between maintainability and sustainability? Um, you see, an, uh, as a nice example, is the car industry where um, maintenance 
and the way you can um, uh, look at your car uh, from a maintenance point of view, it is so far developed that somebody who is using the car can uh, of is aware when it needs maintenance without going too far. Um, if we take that back in the past, uh, sometimes uh, you are too far away from your maintenance task and then you have um, occurred a larger amount of maintenance, what should be done uh, to get the car back in the right order. This is what we do now with all our assets, upfront thinking what is the maintenance part of the assets so that you can uh, make sure that the, the, the systems runs as it should be without breaking down uh, uh, caused by the lack of maintenance. Okay, um, and are you also talking about predictive maintenance, which means uh, you can uh, reduce your cost, but you can uh, also um, uh, uh, reduce energy consumption? Exactly. Uh, so, um, uh, first of all, if you want to enter predictive maintenance, you should uh, first be uh, able to uh, have a maturity level on condition-based mountain maintenance, because otherwise the step is uh, too large. Mm -hmm. And if you are uh, having the ability to go into predictive maintenance, you must be well aware on uh, what type of uh, methods you can, you can uh, predict your maintenance. And um, uh, electricity is a, an important part of being uh, able to predict what type of maintenance your electrified uh, uh, system needs. And a lot of machinery is today uh, electrified, so you do need uh, the electrical part uh, to do predictive maintenance. Um, and, and, and Wim... Um you told us uh, uh, sustainability is all about um, yeah, maintaining your tools and, and, and keeping your assets uh, um, alive as long as you can. But of course, sustainability is also about um, the, the, the global sustainability development goals and uh, reducing the, the greenhouse gas emission. Uh, in what way uh, uh, we, we can... Um, help to do this with uh, with maintenance. Well, <clears throat> you know, um, if I'm, I'm going to focus a little bit on maintenance in industry, but uh, in fact, each time that you perform a maintenance intervention, in my opinion, there there is an occasion to do better, to improve uh, energy consumption for the rest of the life cycle of that asset. So, um, you know. The technical people that are the ones that are still present and they are among the technical installation, the technical assets. So they they should be aware of and they should be um, keen on looking and hunting for possibilities to improve, to improve energy recuperation, to improve alignment. Because if things are misaligned, uh, well, you get stuff that is getting warmer, so loss of energy. Uh, things that are good lubricated more lubrication and the best lubri optimal lubrication means also the least uh, friction, so the lesser friction, the less energy consumption. Um, another stuff is, is also the right dimensioning. Uh, it, 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 it isn't fair to have a very large pump and then ha have a valve that is closing the gap so because there, otherwise there is too much flow. So a uh, pump can be changed uh, if you have an electrical motor and it needs to be rewound. It's the, the, the real time then to, to watch and look for, okay, is this uh, motor really running on this speed and then is this uh, power? Maybe we can have a, a change in the rewinding uh, and making sure that and, and for the, ne the next level of the next decade of the life of that motor, it will run in the optimal uh, point. So each time there is a, a small or even a major technical intervention, there is an opportunity to reduce energy consumption. I'd like to add to that, that uh, it's even about more than energy uh, use reduction. Uh, every time you perform maintenance, you also have a choice to use something that is m less toxic or more nature friendly or doesn't um, decrease nature. Uh, so that's also aspects of sustainability. Uh, and all those things could be considered uh, along with the uh, REMS uh, criteria or whichever 
framework you prefer to use? Yeah, what, what I maybe can add to that is, is that, of course, you also know without any doubt, uh, Hilda, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation uh, mm -hmm. model circular maintenance. Huh? So the, the, the fact, of course, that you maintain stuff that makes that you can have a, a longer life. So the energy, the, that material continues to, ex to exist. So the energy that has been invested in producing something uh, can be written off for, during a longer lifetime. So that's also an important uh, contribution towards circularity and circular maintenance. Huh? Also, when you, okay, you say, look, there is a component uh, that is broken. Uh, when you, okay, throw away the complete application or the complete asset, or you only replace the component, there you also have a considerable, uh, yeah, contribution towards uh, circular economy and sustainability. Mm -hmm. So there is also something to, to be one. And even that, but you buy maybe yeah, more other applications, you say, look, this asset isn't convenient anymore. Uh, maybe then we still could look into an asset and, and, and reuse certain parts of it for new applications. So also there is a, a, a really uh, improvement potential that I think nowadays is uh, not used enough or uh, is not uh, applic applied enough. And I want oh, to add, yeah. Yeah, and I want to add something, ahead. and it's about maintaining the maintenance people, because maintenance is education for maintenance people, uh, uh, making sure that uh, education makes sure that sustain sustainability as a part of the education gets uh, more attention, mm -hmm. because uh, that's very important, because you can uh, adapt and improve your uh, but if you're not adapting and improve your maintenance stuff, you're, you're not doing it completely. So this very important point, education is the maintenance for maintenance people. Okay, a uh, good point uh, to be added. And um, uh, we just talked about uh, the various aspects and ways you can improve maintenance and by doing so, um, uh, extend the equipment lifetime um, uh, uh, produce less waste um, and, and, and uh, reduce the environment, environmental impact. So it is about training, it is about um, uh, the, the way you lubricate, and it is also about uh, the, 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 the flanges. And there's my bridge to the next pitch. It is uh, from Pieter Dijkgraaf. Welcome. Improving the quality of flange connections is one piece of the puzzle to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. In our workshop, during Euro Maintenance Next 2021, the basic principles of the flange joint design will be explained, and into more detail two essential contributors to flange imperfections in practice. We will clarify this by demonstrating the effect of improper uses of a hand torque wrench. If you put too much force, you are applying a far higher torque as the setting. We also will demonstrate the effect of improper applying the tightening steps during flange assembly. Seeing the interaction between bolt, gasket and flange. Join us during the workshop and open up your eyes. There is benefit for all of you, managers, supervisors and technicians. Looking forward to meet you. So we were looking at a, a very enthusiastic presentation of Peter Dijkgraaf, and he was saying that flange diffuse emission is a significant contributor of fugitive emission and leakage. And that scares me a little bit, because uh, is it really the truth that uh, improper usage of a tool or no insight whether the flange is tightened too much or maybe not enough, and maybe there's a lack of expert knowledge uh, is this contributing really to uh, e emissions? Maybe, Wim, you have some examples uh, from the, well, you are, uh, of course, the director from the uh, Belgian uh, Maintenance Association. Do you have some numbers or? No, I'm afraid I have no, I have no figures here at hand. Uh, I have not researched them. But anyhow, I, I do know that f fugitive emissions are a problem. Um, and uh, of course, uh, flanges are one of the sources. Then you can have leakage of uh, fugitive uh, gases, uh, hydrocarbons, etc. And uh, of course, you don't want this. And the question is, 
um, why is this a problem in, in certain factories? Uh, and I think uh, the answer is, is, is very clear. It's a lack of attention. Uh, it's a lack of attention uh, by management. So uh, we should say, look, it's our fault. It's uh, a lack of attention by the people that are executing the job. Uh, uh, it's a lack of uh, attention of people that are controlling the people that are executing the job. Uh, and in fact, it's a lack of the attention of the whole company because everyone is responsible for having the, the right processes and controls and checks in place in an organization. Mm -hmm. And in, in fact, when applying good practices, when doing good checks, etc., when having the right knowledge, this problem can be solved at the source. And, and, and it doesn't have to cost one euro more than it costs today. So it's stupid that we don't pay attention for this. Mm. Uh, now you are uh, talking about a topic I wanted to ask uh, Hilda about, because Hilda, your book uh, is called Dare to be Sustainable. But isn't it all, like Wim said, about profit, making money? Well, not exactly like Wim said, but euros are important. So to what extent is it about daring? Well, I think you. Uh, there are many reasons why a company uh, would try to become fully sustainable. One is uh, obviously saving the planet as our most valuable asset. None of your assets are of any relevance when that asset doesn't function anymore. Uh, but another reason is that it's just a good, it makes business sense. It has a good business case. The third reason is uh, you want to be compliant. And uh, European and Dutch law, uh, well, it's not law yet, but ambitions are 50% uh, reduction of CO2 and uh, virgin material in 2030 and 90% in 2050. So if you want to be compliant in the future, you, sh you should start acting now because, you're as because of the lifespan of your assets. Um, but the business case is also there. Um, the, the part about the leak. I know of the most sustainable industrial company, Interface Carpet Tile Factory. Uh, they had a mission called Mission Zero to their promise to the world to eliminate any negative impact they may have on the planet and everything that lives on it by the year 2020. And they have reached that goal. It's just a smart, smart target now for them by uh, picking the low hanging fruit, but also reaching very high ambitions. But when you've reached an 80 or 90 percent goal, you have to make lots and lots of efforts to also reach the, the last 10%. And things like the le leakages of um, uh, are very important then. So they paid lots of attention also to the leakage of compressed air and stuff like that. So the reason why Interface is such a great uh, example is because they are listed at the stock market. So they have to uh, satisfy shareholders every uh, three months. But they've become a world market leader and they've grown. They've made such a great profit by becoming sustainable. And the secret to all this is if you do everything, so not a project here and a pilot there or some low-hanging fruit somewhere, uh, but if you uh, uh, approach it as a whole, it's a brilliant business case. I think they were went even beyond 100% uh, and they yes. are now giving back uh, because um, I think this is the story where they uh, uh, use the fishing nets mm -hmm. in, I don't know, far away, uh, uh, where, where uh, fishing men leave their fishing nets in the ocean and they uh, get the fishing nets out of the ocean and use this fiber, this plastic uh, for making carpets. Correct. So that's even beyond uh, a neutral uh, production. <laughs> uh, well, they have a new mission now. It's called a climate take back because they said, OK, our promise was to eliminate any negative impact. But we've decreased our natural system uh, to such an extent that zeroing is not enough. So they're saying if we uh, change the climate by accident, can we reverse climate change on purpose? So they now take nature as a benchmark. Can we uh, let our factories function like a forest? How can we make sure that they not only have uh, no uh, harmful emissions, but uh, can they uh, perform in the same way 
that this place performed before we had our plant here. So it's very exciting. And um, of course, this now seems unrealistic as well. Same as Mission Zero did 25 years ago. But they're making progress already. Yeah, and they proved it to be possible. So uh, everyone who is thinking, oh, if this is only costing money and I need to invest and, oh, I don't see the benefits. And uh, it is possible because a company like this proved it to be possible. I can promise any viewer now that if you work uh, on sustainability as a whole, not just uh, fragmentarily, um, it protects you from uh, a threat of your license to operate and it gives you um, a, a winning, uh, you're winning the race from your competitors as well. Okay. Um, Ron, if you hear this, uh, do you have a suggestion where to start if companies uh, want to be more sustainable, want to uh, have a plan like, where do you start? Uh, I almost want to um, um, uh, do it 180 degrees uh, the other way around. Why not start to make sure that there is no leakage? Uh, why do uh, things recurrent, knowing that that is the is caused by a, a faulty uh, um, way of doing your maintenance? Maintenance can be in value add to your company and to your sustainability uh, path, because if you do do your maintenance once and correctly, then uh, you don't have to use uh, people, you don't have to reuse. Um, uh, staff going on site you don't have to do the auto mileage you, you don't have to do so many things twice because you do it in one time uh, in one time right so um, um, I think it's not only thinking about sustainability but it's also uh, thinking about KISS keep it simple and stupid doing things in one time right uh, um, leaves you with a, a very um, concurrent uh, business, but also with a very good and sustainable business, because um, uh, that's the way things are uh, working, by doing things once. Good point. So uh, starting to do things uh, the one time right. I visited a, a chemical plant uh, once, and uh, the, the parking place was called the, the first time right parking place made me a little bit uh, anxious because I had to park my car backwards. <laughs> <laughs> but I managed to do it uh, one time right. So <laughs> The only problem is, of course, nobody uh, does anything by saying, oh, let's do it wrong the first time. So everybody is thinking they're doing it the first time right. True. That's why it's important, I think, when it comes to sustainability and asset management to apply systems thinking. So recognizing that everything you do at one place has an effect somewhere else. Uh, and uh, often we zoom in and address the problem where we see it instead of uh, at the root cause. And that's a way of thinking uh, that could really help to uh, get more first time right. Right. Exactly. Wim, some final words. Where do you think we should start? to get a more sustainable way of working in maintenance and asset management? Well, you know, I, I was just considering this. Um, the, the second part of your um, of your statement is, uh, so maintenance and asset management departments should be highly involved in achieving company sustainability goals. Um, yeah, I, I think they should uh, be involved. Uh, the, the, the real question is why not be involved, as uh, Ron already has explained. Um, and, and then is the next question, why are they not yet involved in this or not enough involved in this? And, and that's why there is, in, in, yeah, there is maybe resistance to change, but there is, I think, also the idea of, okay, if we want to do it, we need to think do things differently. It will cost more money. And, and, and nowadays we are focused on, yeah, uh, getting the best, uh, lowest cost possible, uh, having uptime, etc., which already are contributing, as we already explained. But uh, as we all agreed also, I think there is still a, a lot of room for improvement. And, um, you know, uh, sustainability, circular economy, etc., these are not concepts for a long, uh, a long away future. No, these are concepts for today. 
And um, I, I, as an, an, a maintenance department, uh, we are living in a society which these aspects find very, very important. So we should address this and we should just address this properly. And we should involve, of course, top management, etc. And if our top management is not addressing this issue, then we should make them aware of, look, you're, you're, you're putting the pressure on this type of maintenance. Here is what the impact will be. Uh, what the impact could be on, on reliability, which is a classic argument, but also what, what is the risk and what the potential impact of those decisions on reducing costs are on, on sustainability. Uh, and, and, and on top of that, maybe we should make them aware, you know, if I would have the possibility to, this, to do this and this and this and this, look what opportunities to improve we have. Uh, and that will increase our profit and that will increase our sustainability. And, and, and so there is really a win-win. And I think uh, all our maintenance people should become a missionary or an evangelist like <laughs> myself in order to uh, convince our yeah, fellow managers and our top management on the importance of sustainability and on the achievability of the maintenance and asset management on a sustainable way. So I think that's a, a closing remark that counts, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Perfect words. And we talked about saving the planet so uh, it doesn't get any bigger than this. <laughs> and of course, saving the planet is kind of a, a, a bee hack, uh, but we are all part in this. Uh, BHAG means a big, hairy, audacious goal, but maybe you should have a big, hairy, audacious goal and to make small steps towards it to achieve this goal uh, because it is possible and uh, you should come to Euro Maintenance and see all the possibilities and uh, everything you can do about this. Uh, so uh, Euro Maintenance is the place to be if you want to know more about a sustainable way of working uh, in maintenance and asset management. I thank my guests, uh, uh, Hilda, uh, of course you are also giving a uh, workshop, presenting a workshop at Euro Maintenance uh, with this enthusiastic uh, uh, way uh, uh, you present yourself and uh, talk about sustainability. So uh, thank you very much and uh, good luck at Euro Maintenance. And thank you, thank you Ron and Wim for participating in this round table. And uh, of course, you will be at Euro Maintenance as well. Of course, and we all like hairy goals, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Have a look. <laughs> ah, right. Oh, setting, yes, the two of you. <laughs> yeah, setting small steps, but we, yeah. it, it's all it's all uh, starting with small steps to become exactly. together a big step. Yeah. Exactly. It starts right. with high ambitions, I think. <laughs> high ambitions, but small steps to yeah. get there, right? Okay, yeah. nice That's words to stuff. end. Nice words to end this round table. Thank you very much and uh, ciao, arrivederci, goodbye, and see you at your maintenance.